Hi friends, welcome to Creepy Customs. My name is Kayla and today we are going to be making a brush on glove mold. So if you remember our last video, we created a sculpt of a cat monster. This week we are going to be making multiple casts of that monster. So this is our final product. This is what the cast is going to look like. And this is the final mold. So today what we're going to do is we're going to make the mold and also a mother mold to hold it in place while we pour our resin in here. All right, I'm excited. Let's get into it. Before we get started, let's take a second to talk about what's good for a glove mold and what's not good for a glove mold. So earlier on this year, I created a, a monster that's um, based off a of pumpkin, and he actually had a really good glove mold because he doesn't have a lot of overhangs, and I can pull him out in one piece. So this is what the final mold looked like. You'll notice there's no cuts in here, and when I pull him out, I can just pull it out one piece like that. I created this piece around the same time and for her what we needed to do was create a mold that we cut to let it out. See right here. Well, we did this because there's a lot of overhangs on this piece and it'll get stuck. Well, I casted this Cupid doll, but I had to use a mold. That was two parts. Mostly because of how intricate this is, and we couldn't just pull it out in one piece. So I use a brush on mold called Rebound 25 from Smooth On. This stuff is nice because it's part A and part B and you mix it equal parts. Wear gloves when you are using this stuff and also pour it on a surface that you don't mind if it gets dirty. I have a piece of wood that I use um, to make molds. You can see it's um, very well loved. And what you're gonna need to do is take your figure and super glue it to board. You do this so when you are brushing on the mold, your figure won't move around. I mixed part A and part B and now it's time to lather on this mold making silicone. I don't use a brush, I use a mixing stick, mostly because I can reuse it. So when the silicone dries on the mixing stick, I can just pull it off and use it for my next coat. You're gonna wanna put the silicone on the board to create a type of lip. So this way it'll have a base when you're pouring the resin in the mold. The goal is to cover the whole figure, but don't worry if it's not going on um, too thick. We're going to be doing three layers of the silicone. I put my extra silicone in the freezer so it won't uh, dry out too quickly. When the first layer is tacky but not sticky, you're good to start um, your second layer. Since I put this in the freezer, um, it is going on a bit thicker, but that's good so we can um, make sure all of our overhangs are filled. This is the third coat and I am laying it on as thick as possible. 
There is a thickening agent called 5X, but since I've been putting my silicone in the freezer, um, it's actually pretty thick. So this is the final uh, dried silicone. Now it's time to create a mother mold. I create my mother molds with plaster bandages. Divide your molds uh, down the middle and create two parts um, to hold the mold together. This is me making sure the plaster bandages are long enough. And then I'll fold them in half, get them wet, and start uh, layering them on there. When I'm wetting the bandages, I make sure not to wring them out too much so that all the plaster um, doesn't go away. So I get them just moist enough to be um, thick. I'm not gonna lie, I really like working with this stuff. I think it's really cool. It's like bandaging up the monster before it's born. This is starting to look good. Notice that I'm sticking to one side because we're gonna do one side at a time. So when the first side is dry, I work on the other side. And I leave a tiny gap in the middle to make sure that my plaster pieces don't dry together. This is very important. Alright, both sides are dry and ready to take apart. The side was kind of tricky because of the horn and the mouth, but I just used the scissors to pop it off. I pull the mold off the figure and off the board. I cut the edges to make a square just because it looks better. Now it's time to pull resin into the mold. So I use these woodworking clamps that set up by themselves to make it extra tight so um, I don't have any issues with it moving around while I'm pouring the resin. I use Smooth Class 300, but um, you can really use whatever resin works for you. I like this stuff because it's uh, two parts and it sets up within 15 minutes. The resin is cured and now it's time to uh, pull out the figure. I cut some slits on the side to make it a bit easier to pull out. This was my first cast and I noticed a minor rip in the horn, um, so that's why it looks kind of strange. But what's good about brush on molds is if you do have a rip, you just um, brush it on with some extra silicone. This was my second cast and I'm pretty happy with it. Here's what the figure looks like pre-paint, so next video we'll be painting these guys. Thanks again for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe.